Today I'm going to show you what's inside of this Lexus hybrid drive system and how it works. Now this one's out of a Lexus RX 400H with over 411,000 kilometers on it. Now if you want to learn more about how the power and hybrid electronic system works, check out my other video for that. Now we're going to start at the front of the engine here. We've got the input shaft. Now in these hybrid vehicles we have a permanently engaged clutch. It acts like a damper and a very heavy flywheel over here. Of course you don't need the teeth on the flywheel because there's no starter. Now this transaxle has two high voltage electric motors. This is MG one near the front and then we have mg2 near the back that actually drives the wheel we do have our hookup here for a transmission cooler and coolant that goes inside of here and finally at the back here is where your axles are going to plug into there's no transfer case even though this is an all-wheel drive vehicle and that's because this is a rear electric motor and luckily for you guys i've actually pulled the rear electric motor on this car so we'll have a future teardown on that now i'm going to start this teardown by removing all these high voltage cables check out my new color-coded sockets that i got I'm going to remove these three bolts here for the three phases of the electric motor. Around the back here, I'll work on the wires for MG2. I'm going to get this back cover off. Now these bolts are a little too crusty for my daughter's toothbrush. So i got to come with my grandpa's toothbrush here and scrape off this crust because they're so crusty. Now this transmission's got a pump at the back here. We've also got this resolver over here, which is what's going to sit on this elliptical wheel. And then these three phases here for the electric motor, U, V, and W. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect that from this wiring harness. And then we can pop off this harness. These wires are crustier than my grandma's foot. All right, I'm going to remove these 12 millimeter bolts and hold this in. Now there's a coolant plate over here where coolant comes in to help cool off the electric motors. Now here you can see the fins inside of here that are going to aid with heat transfer between the coolant which runs through the inverter system and the actual transmission case. It's going to move these crusty cooling lines out of the way. It's going to take off some bolts here. And we've got another coolant port here with this plate. There's the other coolant plate. And let's look at the cooling system. Coolant's going to enter here, cool off MG2 which is in this front area here. Head over to MG1 and cool that off and then head back out to the inverter. Next I'm going to start removing the 12 millimeter bolts. I'll hold the transmission casing around. Front side here. And the rest are around the back side here. There's a couple of bolts along the bottom. Alright, let's try to split this case open. Now the heart of this hybrid drive system is this planetary gear set. If I pull this out here you'll see we've got this planet carrier and that's spline to the internal combustion engine through the input shaft over here and then in between that we have the sun gear which is spline to motor generator number one. Now on this side here is the ring gear for that planetary gear set. There's also a gear reduction so let's just take this thing a little further apart so we can see how it powers the wheels. By the way hybrid transmissions are extremely heavy compared to automatics or CVTs. Now this is where the axles plug into the wheels, it's called the final drive. It's a differential and if you want to learn more about, oh I shoot, I have the axles still plugged in on that side. If you want to learn more about how open differentials work, I do have another video so you might want to check that out. I'm going to remove this parking pile mechanism. It's part of the park neutral switch over here and that's going to lock this ring gear which ultimately is going to lock the final drive when you put it in park. That pin out, and I can take this out. Now just like your local government that likes to conceal important things, here is the transmission filter which is concealed inside this entire casing. To me, that's a maintenance item. It should be more easily accessible than that. But I gotta say, after 411,000 kilometers, it's not in terrible shape. But remember, there's no clutches inside of this transmission to wear down. And again, just like your government, there's actually another hidden case inside of here. Let's pull this out. This one's more like a screen. And you can see right through that, it's pretty clean. Now the magnet for this transmission sits at the bottom here. Now there is a few particles along the top here that I can wipe off with my baby's toothbrush. Now, I don't see any more snap rings or anything, so I'm guessing everything comes out the back, so... It's hammer time. Okay, right, so as I was tipping this thing over, this whole gear set came out. Here we have the ring gear for that first planetary gear set. And if you turn it over, there's another ring gear that feeds another planetary gear. Now this planet carrier is locked to the transmission casing with these tabs inside of here. And on this side, we have the sun gear, which is actually connected to the real MG2. There's a special puller you can put on here so that you can pull this thing out properly. And that's because you don't want the rotor to touch the magnets on here and damage it as you're pulling it out. For me, I'm going to be using this special tool, which must be approved by Toyota. Back on the inside, I noticed there's a snap ring here for the sun gear. I think I was just using the wrong circlet. Let's see if this is just going to work. 
and that is MG2 and that is a three phase AC motor we've got the rotor which has got permanent magnets in the middle there's supposed to be a rotor gap going all the way around which is why you're not supposed to take it out the way I did now this side here is where it was spline to the sun gear Woo! luckily it wasn't that my foot should probably not try that at home unless if you already had kids yet uh, this is a lot heavier than your family jewels. Now an RX400 is pretty hefty and that's why MG2 here which is ultimately responsible for driving the wheels under electric only power and assisting the internal combustion engine under moderate acceleration. You'd never be able to get away with the brush motor because the brushes would wear out way too fast. This magnet is pretty strong, it's sticking to all my tools. You can see this ovular shape which is pressed on the top here is for the resolver and that's going to produce that sine wave so the vehicle knows exactly how fast this rotor is turning. Taking a look at the drivetrain here we've got this little sun gear that was driven off of MG2 that's going to plug into this planetary gear set which is then going to come down into the transmission casing and lock in through these tabs. Now sitting on top of this planet carrier is this double ring gear it's got teeth on the inside here from the internal combustion side and teeth on this side here that sits on top of this planet carrier and this gear here ultimately drives the final drive through that counter gear and the differential that we saw earlier. Now having that gear reduction with that planetary gear set allows you to get away with using a smaller MG2 that can spin up faster it'll use a lot less power it'll make the transmission more compact but it also prevents mg1 from over speeding especially when you're at highway condition now let's go take a look at the mg1 side of things it's like mg1 is the bigger one in this case it's heavy all right now on the mg1 side as we said before this is the input shaft that comes from the internal combustion engine spinning that planet carrier and we have this little sun gear which is spun by mg1 there's a washer here well there's a thrust washer up there as well i'm going to remove all these 12 millimeter bolts Kind of pressed in there. Let's give it the old bash. You can see what happens. Let's see what happens. Okay. The plate has a bearing on it. Inside here, we have some 12s to remove the armature. And we've got a couple of 10s to remove the U, V, and W phases from the junction block. Oh, there's MG1. I'm going to try to remove the rotor on MG1. Now here's the rotor for MG1. It is a little bit smaller and thinner compared to MG2. You gotta keep these away from each other because with the extreme magnetic force, I could probably lose some of my digits. And here's the difference between the stator for MG1 and MG2. This one's about a third thicker. Now if you go back to the Toyota Prius video that I did back in 2021 or 22, the second gen Toyota Prius does not have that gear reduction that I mentioned earlier. And thus MG2 has to be a lot bigger than MG1 in order to compensate. And hey, the Prius is a small car. This is an RX400. Now construction is very similar we've got these steel plates here which is where the coils are wound up on again in three phases there's a temperature sensor in these which I ripped out on the rotor very similar we've got steel plates here that house the permanent electromagnets and the elliptical wheel here that's pressed on for that exciter ring now I'm gonna see if I could take one of these apart here so you can show you just how the magnets are arranged and just like the doctor said when I was being born with c-section I'm gonna make an incision along here and don't worry it's not gonna hurt Right, so I ground out a chunk of this. Let's see if we can take off this cover. So here's a look at how the rotor is put together. There's many thin layers of steel here that hold the magnets together to form the core. The magnets themselves, you can see, kind of form this V shape over here. And each side of that magnet has a pole. Now this is a permanent magnet, so you've always got, let's say, a north pole on this side and a south pole on this side, and vice versa, going all the way around. And that's what's going to allow it to interact with the stator. So here we have the stator. Now it's got U, V, and W windings with the common and tied off over here now if you excite let's say phase U, it's going to create an electromagnet on this core over here as that wire is wrapped around the core now that is going to attract let's say this is a north pole and the rotor is now going to move there as it's attracted to it now if you want to advance the motor a little bit more you excite the next phase it's going to move to this phase over here and so on and so forth and because you've got individual cores you can multiply that torque and allow that single north pole to be attracted to every third core over here for more power and more precise rotation. Now compared to the MG1 out of the newer Prius I took apart this MG1 is not coated in epoxy to protect the coil. So here we've got the transmission laid out here so we can demonstrate how it works in different scenarios. Now this is attached to the flywheel to represent the internal combustion engine which is going to drive the planet carrier inside of the gear set. MG1's rotor drives the sun gear inside of the planetary gear set and on this side we have the rotor for MG2. Now it has a sun gear that goes inside of this planetary gear set, planet carrier of which is locked to the transmission housing and the output of everything goes through the ring gear over here which I've colored in red which is ultimately going to drive the final drive and the wheel. So anytime the wheels spin 
MG2 is going to rotate with a fixed gear ratio. Now in our first scenario, let's say you want to sneak out of the house at 5 o'clock in the morning and you don't want your wife to hear, you're going to be using hybrid mode which is only going to turn MG2 and that's going to directly turn the output which is this red gear to move you down the driveway and out of the neighborhood without the internal combustion engine coming on. Now if you notice MG1 is also rotating over here as you're moving MG2 and that can actually act as a generator so it can charge the battery pack even though you're using battery power here to power you down the road. Now MG2 can only operate up to a certain speed, it can't go to full speed and that's why your wife could probably catch up to you as you're going down the road. <laughs> so let's say you come to a stop, your wife jumps in and you know how they always feel cold? They turn on the heater, well that means now the internal combustion engine has to kick on because that's the only way you can get heat inside of the cabin through the heater core. In order to do that, MG1 is now going to start to spin up and you can see it's turning the crankshaft and that's going to act like a starter motor to start the engine and now the engine is going to start rotating. Now as this engine starts rotating, you'll see MG1 is starting to spin pretty fast and it now can act as a generator to send electrical power to charge the battery pack as the engine is starting to warm up. So now you're at idle stop and you want to take off with maximum power to overtake a Hyundai Accent that just cut you off going into the coffee shop. Well, you're going to apply maximum power here to MG2 and that's going to give you nice low end torque so you can take off from that stop sign. However, now let's say you need to add the internal combustion engine's power to MG2 so you can get really going well the key to the ECVT is to vary the speed of MG1 so you'll see as I'm rolling along here as I start to put some drag on MG1 some of that power is now being transferred over to that red gear so it can go to the output and spin the wheels now as I completely stop MG1 you'll see all of the internal combustion engines power being transferred over to those wheels furthermore if I want even more power I can start to rotate MG1 in the opposite direction and that really multiplies the speed that's going out to those wheels and this is something you'd probably do at full blast when you're on the highway when you need maximum speed so now using the gear ratios we can determine how fast MG1 needs to rotate for a given vehicle speed and thus the rotation of MG2. So let's say we're going around 50 miles an hour and the internal combustion engine is on around 1700 RPM. Well you draw a line between the two and that gives you a rotational speed of 2000 RPM in the negative direction. However if you slow down to 20 miles an hour with the internal combustion engine moving at the same speed, suddenly MG1 is now moving in the opposite direction at 3000 RPM. Let's say we're in electric only mode at 20 miles an hour and the internal combustion engine is off at zero RPM draw a line between those two and now we're at minus 3000 RPM for MG1. So you kind of notice that MG1 varies quite a bit in the positive and negative direction and that's why it's important to have that extra gear on the MG2 so you don't overspeed MG1 and burn it out. So let's say now you're going at real lethal speeds here and you crest that hill and your radar detector starts going off. Well suddenly you're going to let go of the gas. The internal combustion engine is going to stop. That's because you don't need to burn gas as you're just rolling down the hill starting to slow down and it's all going to be up to MG2. Now, MG2 itself is now going to be providing some bit of braking action as you start to step on the brakes through regenerative braking. It's going to take kinetic energy and transfer it over to electrical energy to charge that battery as you start to slow down. And that's why hybrid vehicle brakes last so long because these motors are doing the brunt of the braking force for you. Now as you're resting at a stop here, the cops writing you a ticket and your wife's telling you I told you so, the internal combustion engine can kick on at any time it wants to charge that high voltage battery. So let's say for example the 12 volt battery is running down as your kids running their iPad off the charger this can start up at any time and rotate MG1 to charge the battery. Not only does MG2 act as a generator, MG1 also does as well. See, and that's the beauty of the ECVT. Now, in a normal automatic transmission in a planetary gear set, you'd hold one thing stationary, one is the input, and then the other one becomes the output. However, in this ECVT, you would vary the speed of this, so this is still rotating at the same time, and that's going to give you a variable ratio on the output, so you can always control the speed electronically. There's no need for a valve bodies or extra fluid coolant anything like that it's all done with simple electronics so here's a close look at the resolver you can see it's got little copper windings inside of there that create little cores that's going to send a signal back out to the computer and it's going to sit on top of this resolver ring here which you can see is an oval shape and that's going to tell the computer which direction and speed these motors are rotating and you've got one of those on each motor in addition to the crank position sensor using that it can determine which gear ratio and how speed the vehicle is moving 
So a note about the transmission fluid. This here is the shaft that's driven by the internal combustion engine to push this tiny little pump that sits on the back of this transmission here. It's essentially going to take fluid from the bottom of the transmission and push it back up to the top of the transmission here where there's just a big hole right at the back of the resolver. So it's just circulating fluid. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't see much point in sending fluid from the bottom back up to the top if there's big giant gears and motors here that could do the same thing. Now this little filter here mounts up to the back of the transmission cooler line. Now that's going to bring fluid through this externally mounted pump here which sits behind the headlight to this externally mounted radiator which is going to help cool it off. This is just as a transmission fluid to air cooler, there's no coolant passing through. Now as a testament to this design, this transmission's got over 400,000 kilometers on it and there's not a speck of wear to be found. I mean, other than bearings and a couple of gear teeth, there really is nothing to be worn out inside of here. All you're doing is varying the motor speed and keeping them cool with the transmission fluid. And that's a testament to Toyota's eCVT for reliability. It is worth noting that all of these motors and gears are fully covered in automatic transmission fluid to keep them cool. Automatic transmission fluid is not conductive, so it won't bother the coil. And that's a wrap on the electronically controlled, continuously variable transmission and how it works. I think these hybrid systems are actually fairly solid and reliable, probably even more so than a manual transmission, and they've proven themselves to last a long time. Make sure you support me on Patreon and subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one.